What's up, YouTube? I am home from the Seattle DLC uh, for Lurkana. Uh, this was my third uh, Lurkana DLC this year. I got to go to Chicago, uh, Las Vegas, and Seattle. Um, and I thought I would just make a quick video and kind of talk about the DLC season as a whole. Um, and, you know, again, coming from the perspective of a new player, coming from a, a perspective of a first time TCG competitor. Um, and just talk about a few different things that uh, there's some conversation going around on Twitter um, today, and, and I have some thoughts about. Um, you know, and, and also just kind of reflect on the, the whole DLC season as a whole. I think the first thing I want to say is that uh, overall, I thought the DLCs were really well done this year. Um, everyone I went to got better and better. Um, uh, Seattle was a really great experience. It was run really expertly. Like I saw just even little things that got better um, every time, um, e even, you know, I, some of it, you know, I'm sure has to do with venues and, and what's available, but the sound system was so much better in Seattle than it was in Vegas. Uh, in Vegas, you know, it was a little hard to understand the announcers sometimes when they would, you know, call the beginning of a round or, or something. And uh, it was great in Seattle, like everything in, in Seattle was really great. The event was run um, really, really smoothly uh, overall. Um, you know, there was still a fair amount of like waiting in between, um, rounds, but I, I think that's going to be normal. You're going to have things go to time. You're going to have time extensions for, for rounds. So that didn't bother me too much. Um, overall, it was just a really great experience. Um, you know, every one of them, I love the artist signings, um, you know, getting to meet, uh, Ryan and, and Steve, uh, I won the lottery with Steve, um, in in seattle and and was lucky enough to make it uh in between rounds um so that was really exciting um you know the side events were great uh especially having first chapter and floodborne sealed those were super exciting i didn't get to participate in them uh but you know hearing just the cheers break out as uh somebody opened an elsa right like um that's just so exciting for the game um you know, and to have those kind of sealed events happening at the same time as, as these other constructed events, um, it really just makes it a great celebration of the game. And I know that's one of the things that they were kind of setting out for. So um, just, you know, big, big uh, congratulations to the Ravensburger team, the, the PPG team. I think overall, um, the events were really great. I know this is only the first year. Um, I hear a lot of people try to compare it to, um, you know, things in, in magic tournaments or Pokemon tournaments, but those games have been going on for a long, long time. And, uh, this is the first time with Lorcana and, you know, I, I think, and, and we'll talk a little, a little bit more about this in a minute, but I think what Lorcana is doing is really special. And I think, you know, they're really trying to build an event that is a little bit different and a little bit more inclusive and, um, you know, I think that's really great, right? Um, they have ADA, um, you know, accessible options for people who, who need accommodation, who need to, you know, play on a static table, who want to play, you know, off to the side and, and not be in the hustle and bustle of trying to make it to your next table, um, you know, if you have limited mobility. And, and I think that's just amazing. Um, you know, those are things that I think make me feel really incredibly welcome uh, at a DLC, and and I know uh, other people who who definitely feel the same way. So um, again, just huge congratulations to the team at Ravensburger and PPG for running a really amazing first DLC season. I'm I'm really looking forward to next season. Um, I want to jump into a, a few different um, topics uh, to chat about uh, today. The first, I just want to give massive congratulations to uh, Wonderland. Um, you know, he's uh, a content creator in the community. He's a competitor. He's on Labyrinth. Um, you know, he streams on on Twitch, and uh, it's really cool to see somebody who puts in that kind of effort and is is doing that kind of work in the community. Um, you know, being really open and and talking about his plays. Uh, rewarded in this way with with a huge win in the final dlc of the season um 
I started uh, the event uh, two seats over from him, so I uh, dodged him uh, at the beginning of the event. Uh, he did borrow a pen from me for round one, so I'm going to just you know take a little solace that I contributed a very, very small amount uh, to, to his success. Uh, I'm joking, of course, but, um, you know, huge props to, to Wonderland on uh, taking down the final DLC of the season. Um, I want to preface the rest of this by saying, like, everything I say here is really constructive. Like I said, like, I, have, I had a really great time this whole season, but I think there's a couple of things that, um, you know, could have gone better with the DLCs as a whole and, and, you know, even this last one, um, I'm going to, you know, send a message to Ravensburger and, and PBG. I know they're always looking for feedback. And so I'm going to, I'm going to surface some of this, uh, to them, you know, before you jump into the comments and, and whatever. But, um, I do think there's a few things that we can kind of talk about, um, you know, that the organization, uh, and, you know, the rules committee, I hope that they maybe take a look at, um, you know, and then uh, just the the kind of larger community, um, you know, could maybe take a look at as well. Uh, the first thing, and I think, you know, this one is maybe just a really short conversation, but uh, for those who don't know, in Seattle, they really started to kind of crack down on the use of reminder tokens, um, as well as the use of like putting a dice on your hand, uh, to indicate that it's your hand or how many cards you have in hand, um, you know, and, and considering that to be note taking, uh, in the, the rules document. Um, so there's been some conversation about that. Um, you know, I think my view on it, um, is that I think we should be allowed to use reminder tokens. I think reminder tokens are an indication of the game state. Right, like if a character has evasive, if a character has bodyguard, if a character, if you play Pete and there's no actions allowed next turn, um, I think those kinds of things are reminders about the board state, and it helps people um, avoid misplays. Right, uh, I think the the stance on Pete is that if you play an action, like it gets rewinded. Right, you can't actually play that action, um, and so you know, having reminders about things like that, about game state, I think is just good for the game. I, as a new player, again, um, as a player with ADHD, um, you know, I, I try my best to focus on the game. I try my best to, to focus on the gameplay, but I, there's times I get distracted. There's a judge call happening, you know, two seats over to me and it, I get distracted for a second. And, and I, you know, I overhear something that was said, you know, about like, uh, a card combo, you know, that I really like, that I really like to play in, in my fun deck. And, you know, I, I like to participate in the community. We're all playing this game together there. And like, oh yeah, I jump in, I, I engage in a quick moment of conversation with somebody who's maybe over on the next table and we have a quick conversation. And, and that's part of the game for me. And like, yes, it's a competitive atmosphere, but like we're there to to play the game and have fun. And, and that's what I enjoy about playing it. I want to compete. I want to succeed. I want to do well, but I also want to enjoy the atmosphere and enjoy playing this game that we really love to play with each other. Right. Like that's a ton of fun. Um, meet new people, right. See familiar faces, you know, from, from round to round. Chances are if, if I'm in round five of the main event and I'm not doing well, and I'm at those tables, I'm going to drop like in the next round potentially. And, that person that was catty cornered to me, I'm going to see in the 5 PM constructed event maybe. And, and we're going to strike up a conversation again. So, um, all that to say, I sometimes get distracted and, uh, having those kind of reminder tokens helps pull me back to the game and helps me, um, helps me focus. And I think it makes the game more accessible for newer players. It makes the game more accessible for people who are, uh, neurodiverse. Um, and I wish those were explicitly allowed in the rules, right? We we got explicit um, involvement for or explicit allowance for ink tokens, um, and I use them. I use ink tokens um, when I play um, because uh, as a I play a lot of blue red, and as a blue red player, you're you're constantly how far I go, and you'll you'll set your hand down and and look at two cards, and then ink a card, and then. 
uh, you know, put the other one into your hand or you're doing Grim Atala and you're looking at two cards and you're putting one into your hand and one at the bottom of your deck and you're setting down your hand a lot. And I don't ever want to mix my hand up with the ink, right? I don't ever want to break that rule. I, I, and break the, the, um, you know, a knowledge infraction in that way. Um, I want to play the game by the rules. And so, um, tools like that help us play the game by the rules and not make errors that could lead to somebody getting disqualified or, you know, getting a warning or getting some sort of judgment. You know, there are going to be people, they're going to be sharks and they're going to try to angle shoot and maybe do that kind of stuff on, on purpose. And that should be punished. But there's also people that are just going to make an honest mistake and we should be doing things and we should structure the game and structure the tournament in a way where, uh, we minimize the chance of things like that happening. Um, there's been a lot of conversation about this kind of back and forth. Um, you know, uh, ink tokens are allowed, but you can't put a little token on your hand when you set it down. Um, so th this has been a, a moment of, of conversation. Uh, you know, I, I think exactly what Professor Bloke said, accessibility matters and while it is the player's responsibility, it's also why I prefer to use evasive ward resist tokens to clarify the board state and make it more accessible for players of any skill level, right? One of the things I love about Lurkana is that it is such an accessible game. And, you know, you could be matched up against an eight-year-old playing the game who's playing hyper aggro and, you know, he's competing and he's doing his best. I, I play with a couple of eight-year-olds in my league every week and they kick my butt on a regular basis. Um, and I think that's good for the game, right? It's good for the, the growth of the game. It's good for the health of the game to have people like that, to have kids getting so involved in this game that they're going to play at a DLC with their dad. Like that's great for a father son relationship. It's great for, um, you know, it's great for the game because that kid is going to grow up and play this game for the rest of his life. Right. And he's going to become a competitor when he's, you know, 25 and he's going to make top 64. Like that's so good for the game and anything we can do to make it easier for younger players to play the game, to make it easier for neurodiverse players, for players with disabilities to play the game. Like we should be encouraging that. And I, I really hope the rules committee reconsiders this and makes reminder tokens for board state uh important i i understand the argument around like not necessarily using that die to signify how many cards in your hand because you could lie about it you could attempt to misdirect and um mislead your opponent but i think you should be allowed to at least use a token to say hey this is my hand i'm setting it to the side while i'm paying attention to your turn um you know, but even with a die, even if you used a die to say, I have four cards in hand, um, you know, you can always clarify. You can always go, how many cards do you have in hand? Four? Okay, great. Um, and they're required to tell you. And if they're not telling you, they're breaking the rules, right? Um, and, and they should have a judge called on them because uh, hand size is public knowledge, right? Uh, hand size, discard, um, you know, what's in the discard are, are public knowledge. So, um, you know, I'm not talking about using dice to indicate, you know, how many cards they've, they've inked or, you know, like the, that, that stuff is, is public knowledge. Uh, um, th that information should always be accessible to, to players. Uh, you know, we certainly know from the rules document that if you use Ursula 2 to look at somebody's hand, you can't take notes with dice and set them off to the side of, of what you saw. Right. Um, I think that's really what the spirit of the rule is trying to get at. Um, I just, I, I hope that they reconsider and, and clarify it um, because I think it would be a good um, step forward for the game. Um, here's just one other comment on this. Um, you know, they were using reminder tokens on stream in uh, Dallas and in toronto and in vegas you would see them put evasive to tokens down uh, i don't think they used them um in seattle um as part of this kind of wider crackdown on on note taking um but uh it, they were used on stream um 
you know, I, I know that even uh, one of the judges, uh, you know, believes the same as I do, that reminder tokens for your own character's effects and your own game action should not count as notes. Um, but that decision is is not down to individual judges, right? That's obviously made it at, at a much higher level. So I hope the rules committee takes a look at it and I hope we get, you know, some sort of clarification or, or some sort of new rules document here, even before nationals uh, would be really cool. Um, you know, I think there's continued conversation around uh, best of two, uh, two game format versus best of three. Um, and the kind of collusion that that happens. Um, I like two game format. Um, you know, I do think that while we still have a fairly small um, card pool, uh, play draw disparity is still a thing. Um, and I think, yes, good players can win on the draw, but there are some matchups that are just gonna be very hard. A, a blue red player, on the draw against a hyper aggro deck, you're very, very seldomly going to win that matchup. Um, you know, I think some things would happen would help if we did go back to a best of three, introducing a sideboard. Um, I know there's lots of people that are against that for various reasons, and I know part of the unique deck building of Lorcana is having inkable cards and non inkable cards, and and if you include a non inkable tech card in your in your deck, you know that's uh, a deck building choice that you made and uh if you can just swap that out in a sideboard um you know deck building is not as important of a, a skill right um i think lorcana really rewards good deck building and so um you know i, I don't want to see that change necessarily just because um I, I enjoy no sideboard. I, I enjoy the pressures of of deck building, just personally. Um, I think if we go to a best of three in the long term of this game, I would love to see a sideboard because I think it would help solve some of those play draw disparity issues. Um, I'm okay with best of two. I think the problem is the collusion, um, the gentleman agreements, um, and the pressure that uh somebody might make to try to make you concede yes i think a as a player in certain situations you should do the right thing and you should concede uh, a game to give somebody the 2-0 if if you are no longer in intention yeah you should probably concede and just give the other person the 2-0 but it's unfortunate we have to play the tournament that way right i i come to play lorcana i don't want to be conceding and not playing Lorcana. Like I, I paid, you know, fifty dollars for my entrance. I want to play Lorcana in the main event, uh, and I want to be rewarded for um, earning tickets that way. Right. Um, I don't want to just concede and go stand around and wait for the next round to play. I, I don't think that's fun. Um, I don't like this. You know, you're essentially just playing a best of one at a certain point. But I think we need to crack down on people who are trying to manipulate that situation for their own favor, right? Um, I'm friends with a lot of women who play, and and I was just talking with a, a friend of mine yesterday at the airport on the way home from the DLC who said that she was asked to roll for uh, a game in towards the end of the, the main event uh, by a competitor. Um, who was putting a lot of pressure on her and she didn't want to be confrontational. Um, and uh, so she just acquiesced and she she rolled a die and, and the game was decided that way. Uh, and I know, like, you know, they're making announcements that you can be disqualified for accepting that kind of a proposal. Um, but we we need to find a way to be able to, like, reward or not reward but like punish the people that are that are engaging in that kind of behavior um because it is really problematic i i think you know even in a three game format um i would love if we would, would go to a three game format where you could not id you could not split um and that splitting would just result in zero points um instead of a, a single point in best of three um 
I think you should have to play it out, and I think there should be a winner. Um, I, I would like to see every round uh, have to have a winner. Um, you know, and, and, you know, you can solve ties by doing the, the single elimination tie-breaking rules to where, you know, someone has to win, and it's the player who has the most lore at the end of, uh, you know, uh, round five. I, you know, ultimately die roll still matters at that point. Cause if you're going first and you're questing hard, like th there are some decks that can kind of come back from that and do a lot of removal really quickly and then quest hard, but some decks just can't, right? If you're playing red, blue, you're, you're not going to have the most lore after five turns, uh, likely. Um, but I think, you know, going to a best of three format and, uh, requiring every game to have a winner, um, I think would go a long way to solving this collusion problem that, that we see in the best of two format. Um, I don't think just going to best of three solves the problem. I think people are still going to ID and collude and get that one point so that other people who are, who are winning and getting those three points can't catch them. Right. Um, I think that should not be allowed. I think that should be outlawed. Uh, and again, I, I say this as a new competitor. I, I think, I think that's really shitty. Uh, I think somebody who loses their, their first match, but then wins out, but loses on tiebreakers because other people, you know, were IDing at the top. Like, I, I hate those kinds of shenanigans. Let's play the game. There should be a winner. There should be a loser. The, the person that wins the most should win, right? Um, that's the game we play. Uh, again, just my opinion. I'm just one person, just a fairly new person. There's one last thing I want to talk about. I know I'm getting a lot of notifications uh, on Twitter right now as I record this video, but because uh, I, I tweeted and, and engaged in some, some discourse about this final topic. Um, but I do think this is important. Um, Harlan is a, a Blue Steel player, um, one uh, I really enjoy. I really enjoy his content. Um, and I agree with Harlan, right? I love going to Lorcana events and seeing the diversity. I, I mentioned, uh, you know, getting to... Uh, see kids compete um but also like you know non-binary players women like uh it's a really good sign for the game and everyone is super welcoming and having a great time uh, i love that I, i'm a member of of love delore um i played with my love delore ink tokens all weekend and i i got to give out a couple to competitors that i played against um so that was super cool right like i i i love that i love that for the game um and I love that Lorcana wants to be that space and the majority of the community wants to be that space. But I, I still don't think that um, just wanting to be that space is enough, right? Um, I come from, uh, you know, a education background where, um, you know, when, when you're talking about feminist theory or you're talking about race theory, um, one thing you have to pay attention to are the structures that are in place um, that keep the status quo right? Uh, in, in place. And I was just talking about that with like reminder tokens, right? That's a great example. The rules are written in a certain way that reward people who have experience and knowledge and who, you know, take the time to go study the rules documents and, you know, have that attention to detail and don't have ADHD. Uh, the structure of the tournament and the structure of the way that the game is played rewards those people and punishes people who don't have access to those things, right? Um, not having a digital client is another example of this, right? Um, having a digital client, anybody can go and put a thousand reps in it on a, on a game and get better. Um, now it's much harder to get games in. If you, if you live in a community where you have a single LGS, and maybe your local Lorcana community is struggling to get enough players to fire every week. And so there's just casual can play it and there's no other like competitors. How are you getting good rep games in? Well, you have to find a Discord community and you have to connect with people in Discord. And, and there are groups that are doing wonderful things to make the game more accessible. So, you know, I, I wanna praise groups like Lore20, right? I'm in the Lore20 Discord and I learn so much in the deck list threads, right? And, and the people that are in those threads that are sharing 
uh opinions i got to play against rip lungs this weekend uh in the 8 a.m constructed on sunday and he is in the blue steel threads all the time sharing information sharing deck lists i've learned a ton i played a lot of blue steel uh last set and i learned a ton from him and i got to play against him this weekend that's awesome right um there are people like that that are sharing their information harlan is another great example of this harlan is making videos uh you know, on a regular basis about Blue Steel and about the matchups and about what to prepare for and just providing that content free to the community, right? That's incredible. Um, I also think people should get rewarded for that. And, and you know, when they put out their guides, people should buy them. Um, I'm really thankful that people like uh, No I'm Not put out a, an RP primer last set uh, and made it accessible for $5, right? I can drop $5, that's a cup of coffee right? Uh, I can, I can pay that $5. I can get that guide. Um, I, this is one of the things I really appreciate about the lab guys, um, is that, uh, the material that they're putting out is being put out at a really reasonable price point too, right? Um, sailor's guide you can get for $10. You can go to, to Medify and you can subscribe for one month and you can download the guide and you can read it for $10. And the ten dollars that I got there uh, helped me improve as a player so much for Vegas that I got way more points in Vegas. Um, it was well worth the ten dollars I spent, and so you know, people like that that are sharing their knowledge uh, is is part of what's amazing about this community. It's part of what is so amazing about um, about the Lorcana community, um, the Labyrinth team, and and other people too. Um, that are just putting out content on a regular basis for us to learn, grow. Earl Meister, um, so many people. Spessy was was there this weekend. Alphos was there this weekend. Um, I went up and said hi to to Moyen. Um, Moyen's on the Podcana podcast, and I thanked him for all of their content because it's made me a better player. I whenever the podcast drops every week for Podcana, I go and I listen to it because the conversations that Brendan and Moyen and Kawa have on that podcast make me a better player. I am a better player because I listen to that podcast. Um, so you know, I, I want to thank people like Harlan who have helped make this community uh more diverse. Um, a couple of other people, um, you know, again, just another example of the lab guys being um really supportive in this way. Uh you know, I the way that they make Lorcana super inclusive um, to me has made me feel welcome. And it's made me feel like I can go up and I can say hi to Sailor and I can say, hey, thanks for your guide. Like it, it's made me a better player. Um, this person, I, I don't know this person, but Deej uh, made a, a, a post um, this morning. Uh, and I just want to read through it really quick because I think um, they make some really good points. Uh, I often see men praising the Lurkana community for being more welcoming than other TCGs. However, I wonder how many realize that that is only possible because of the hard work that is being done by the people who haven't felt welcomed in these spaces before, and that it has a cost. We see diversity in the community, but mostly in positions of support, organizers, judges, casters, but inevitably a day two comes around and it's 99% men that have made the cut. If you're one of the people who think that this is a problem, it's not enough to acknowledge it. You can help fix it by taking some of the burden of support away from your friends and peers so that they can focus on the competitive aspect of the game. Invite someone that doesn't have the same background or experience as you to be on your team. Offer to play test with them on their uh, terms. Don't just wait for the call. Be proactive and put yourself out there before you're asked. Don't just reap the spoils of this incredible community. Build it for others as well. And if you've already got your invite to Continentals, help someone prepare for the last chance qualifier. Um, I just want to co-sign like, this entire thread. Uh, I think this thread is pointing out something really important. Um, I'm a member of the Love Delore group, and there's a lot of incredible people in that community. And there's a lot of them that are involved in the DLC in in various ways um you know they're they're not a part of the love delore competitive team they're you know just a part of the larger love delore server um 
some of those people are judges. Some of those people are staff for the event and worked the info point or worked the side event table or worked the, um, the place where you go to redeem your prize tickets, or they worked the place where you go to check in to go, you know, get your artist signing. Um, and the judges do so much more than judge, right? The judges are, uh, doing line coordination and cleaning up a spill because they asked me to put my coffee on the floor and I accidentally kicked it over and I spilled my fresh coffee all over the floor and they went and cleaned it up and helped got paper towels. Like the judges were so amazing, um, for this event and, and they're working in a support capacity so that we can go and be our best competitive selves. And so that when we call judge that we know it's going to be uh, a woman or a non-binary person or a person that we know that's going to be inclusive and is going to hear us out and hear our concern and take us seriously, right? Um, we can only, as non-male competitors, succeed in the way that we can because we're being supported, right? Um, uh, Lorcana Bell is like always on various podcasts and uh, and is so supportive in the the Love Delore community, right? Like started a support thread that people could post their results throughout the day and get encouragement and be cheered on. And um, I don't know, I'm gonna get a, get, a, get a little emotional about it, honestly. But like, um, you know, when when you have an O2 and you're feeling really down on yourself because the format is so unforgiving, uh. And you, you post that update in, in the thread and somebody goes, take a breath, uh, go get them next round, right? Like, you got this. Um, you'll hit a steel song next, right? Uh, having that moment when you're, like, down on yourself, you're, like, you're stressed because you, like, made a misplay that cost you a game. Uh, having somebody rooting for you in your corner, um, so powerful. Uh, it really is, um, as a competitor who like feels alone, um, sometimes, uh, super powerful to have that kind of support. Um, so like, thank you to the, the supporters, the, the organizers, the judges, the casters, the, um, the, the support teams, the away teams, um, you know, who maybe don't have the finances to come and support and compete in an event like a DLC, but are, are still rooting you on from afar and checking in with you and messaging you and, and supporting you. All right. Going to stop getting emotional. Um, I made a thread. This is my thread on it, um, on my Twitter. Really important thread and post here. Uh, Lab has wild success. It is really awesome. RMB has offered some sliding scale coaching for women, non-binary folks, but it's going to take a lot more to really see this TCG grow into what it's capable of. People like myself, a queer trans woman, didn't have access to TCG spaces growing up. We're a decade or more behind in competitive experience. And so my ask to the competitive Lorcana community is take an interest in women, non-binary folks, disabled folks, neurodiverse folks, invite us to your testing groups, help us improve our fundamentals. Watching content, reading guides, etc., will help us improve, but so will those one-on-one -on -one conversations and you sharing your knowledge, talking through difficult spots and misplays. I know personally, I'm still learning fundamentals. When should I challenge? When should I quest? You know, when do I leave this character unexerted and do nothing? Because it's more important to have it on the board. You know, when do I focus on hand advantage and drawing cards versus removing their board, spending my resources? What's the best curve distribution for constructing my deck? Uh, you know, for a lot of people, that's intuition. But for newer players like me, it's mental math every day. Uh, share your secret sauce with us before the big event. Uh, invite us to the sweaty Airbnb where we can play test our ideas. Jam games with us late night on untap. Explain why you played, you know, X in, in Y spot or, you know, when we're playing at league. I don't want to sound desperate. I'm super grateful for the support I've gotten. I've improved so much this year. Uh, but I know lots of people don't have the support that I have. They don't have access to that support. Um, 
And I know a number of people with competitive aspirations are on the verge of quitting. They feel overmatched and disappointed when they run into a shark who tries to angle shoot. A friend was asked to die roll for a game uh, towards the end of the day, and she felt too pressured to even call a judge. Help us gain the confidence so that we don't get walked over. Um, that's really it. Uh, that's the video I wanted to make. Um, thanks for tuning in. Uh, sorry that this was just kind of like a social media react video, but um, I really wanted to talk about some of these things and get some of my my thoughts out while I was still fresh. And I've kind of found with these videos, if I like wait too long and if I I try to like construct my thoughts and like put together a a short like well constructed video, I'm gonna not make the video. Um, because I get busy or something comes up or I just get demotivated to do it. So, um, just making the video, putting it out there into the world has kind of been the, the most successful, uh, way for me to, to kind of get my thoughts out there. Um, thanks for tuning in, please. Uh, you know, the people that have subscribed to the channel or who comment, like, I, I really appreciate it. Um, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one.